good afternoon uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, welcome to the uh, ask me anything session with uh, tai chennai uh, we are truly living in some extraordinary times uh, i'm not saying whether it's good bad ugly any of this but this is completely unprecedented uh, some of us uh, who are living older than many of you have seen a few crises but uh, uh, there is nothing which is uh, uh similar to this in terms of its global impact and uh, and, and so on and so forth so uh, fortunately we have a, a very uh, experienced uh, professional uh, in raju raju vankatraman uh, joining us today to to um he share his experience and his views uh, and perspectives but more importantly uh, answer a lot of questions uh, that we may have uh, around this crisis uh, and this crisis is not just about a lockdown it's about the getting back to life after that as well okay uh, just to give a brief introduction raju is a iit graduate uh, iit madras graduate alumnus and uh, he worked in india and then the us uh, with the eds uh, before uh, be- becoming a serial entrepreneur uh, he had a series of ventures uh, vetri software revity uh, and others um and uh, these were in the it it enabled services dpo healthcare kind of uh, business and uh, currently he is the founder chairman of uh, medal healthcare and uh, this is their uh, diagnostic lab chain and uh, uh, their i think in the very short period of 9 years they are the number four player in the, in the market uh raju has experience of uh, managing businesses in many countries in india the us the, in mexico in china and many other places so he can actually bring in a truly uh, a global perspective to to our uh, our discussions today uh, besides uh, uh, his role as a founder chairman he is a very great supporter of tai chennai charter member he is a, a awardee of serial entrepreneurship award of uh, tai chennai so thank you rajiv to welcome on board to to spend time next couple of hours with uh, with the mini effort members and uh, we look forward to benefiting from this stuff and you want me to yeah. start first yeah absolutely absolutely uh, so maybe you could start by giving uh, your overall perspective of uh, uh, this crisis and specifically with our industry but the overall economy in general at, at a high level before we really get into very specific questions and uh, issues people might raise thank you ranga i also want to thank akila pravina and priya from tai and all the executive council members for having me here first let me start by wishing and hoping and praying that each and every one of you you are doing fine your family members are fine your colleagues and all your near and dear ones are doing good tough days covid 19 is real and we are in day 20 i guess of the lockdown let me tell you personally i am praying a lot more than i do normally i am also listening to bhajans and other things i am exercising a lot more i am trying to keep my mind off of the numbers that are flashing all over the world but in reality i have lots of lots of questions that i am pondering on every minute of the day i am sure each and every one of you you are thinking of many questions but couple of them that keep coming back to me is will the economy be affected post the lockdown we now we know that during lockdown it is completely bad and the answer is certainly yes but the real question is how bad will it be and the second question that comes to my mind is how will we recover there are several forecasts and models that have been published but frankly i don't believe in any one of these forecasts and models and i urge each and every one of you also to not totally believe in any one of them financial markets nsc bsc they are depressing and 
these indices and other indices that are published they are definitely not going to improve the mindset that we have so where does the real answer lie in to the questions that we have the real answer is how well have we contained the corona virus second question is when we come out of lockdown how will companies firms how will society react when we come out of the lockdown and that is the real question that is in front of us how are we all collectively going to react when we come out of the lockdown currently we are all speculating there are no real answers there is enormous amount of uncertainty in everyone's mind uncertainty is okay anxiety has come in and i'm sure it is also beginning to worry quite a few of us the risk of global recession is i think real i really think there is going to be because this is a pandemic and all the pandemics have caused global recession and we don't need to be scared of recession but we need to accept that that is a possibility and what will be the impact of this in india again the answer is how well have we contained the virus and how well are we prepared to fight it because this virus is going to be there for a long period of time common cold and flu has been around for 100 years and we have learned to live with it so how well are we going to do that is the real question in front of us the good news is india is largely a domestic economy our dependence on export is very very low on a relative basis and i also sincerely applaud the government for the swift action that they took in ordering the lockdown across the nation not a joke 1.3 billion of people in lockdown now i am hoping and praying that the government will act very very swiftly again to address the challenges that are going to be paid, uh, faced by all sizes of industry not just msme but even large companies we are going to face some real challenges ahead of us as soon as the lockdown opens let me state my biggest fear and i don't i'm not painting the doom but i want to paint some facts so that we are all prepared for the worst and hope the worst doesn't happen the biggest fear is credit line squeeze or credit line breakdown the banks etc and this will lead to large number of bankruptcies and the consequence of that is unemployment will go up and this is where all of us as business owners and leaders need the the biggest help from the government and if the government acts swiftly i really think that our recovery will be v shaped v shaped is a very good recovery the speed at which we came down we will come back so we are talking of coming back at a rapid pace i am almost certain that every sector of our industry will see demand destruction and i am deliberately using a tough word destruction every sector will see it or it could be you know slowing down supply side will be also affected from many companies not able to produce raw material dependency all the labor shortages in some cases and how do you forecast demand that is going to be a huge challenge are we going to stock up like we did are we going to reduce the production all these are challenges and don't forget the supply chain supply chain is also affected the small truck owners to large fleet owners are suffering and they have mortgages to pay and will they be back what will happen all those are challenges that we have to face collectively 
And again, I come back, if we don't get the financial support, these challenges will look like mountains and it will be tough for us all to scale it individually. And the recovery will be slower. The second concern that I have after the credit risk is consumer confidence. Consumer confidence can be shattered in situations like this. Now, if there are many bankruptcies, unemployment increases, our own healthcare spend, not necessarily cost per transaction, but our spend can go up. I think people will go and reduce their discretionary spend and start saving up. Now, saving up, domestic saving going up is not necessarily good unless there is unlimited credit given to us to spend. So what will happen is the economy will slow down. Now, these are things that should keep us all worried a bit. However, the good thing is in many of these situations, and I say this with 35 years of seeing this in business, every breakdown, we can find a breakthrough. I repeat, every breakdown can be a breakthrough. And it is the intelligence with which we connect with our customers, connect with our suppliers, and the intelligence with which we plan our finances very carefully and conserve cash and don't go on a huge expansion plan at this point in time, but conserve cash, cut cost wherever it is prudent. I think these are measures that we will be forced to take. And as business leaders, we have a very important role and we will talk about it a lot more during this session. I think we need to instill the confidence we need to be the cheerleaders. We need to provide the energy that the organization will require from each and every one of us. And these are challenging times. There are no tested answers. There are no textbook answers. I think your gut and inst uh, your instincts are going to help you survive. And the only strategy in my mind that needs to be there is survive and while you are surviving your loyalties will change so can we grab a piece of that is the question that you must have a separate team in your organization working on while you maintain the day-to-day -day activities of your business so with that said i'm very confident that this one shall pass to we will survive, we will figure out, we will put India back on track and we will be a $5 trillion economy in spite of this breakdown. There are significant opportunities. One of the things that is going to become a reality is the emergence of digital economy. Education industry has already moved to digital world and the classes seem to be running fine in many parts of the world and healthcare is going to the 3G phones, people are connecting. So there are going to be fundamental shifts that are going to happen and I think the opportunities ahead of us are equally exciting and like Noel Tishi, my guru says, you need to have ideas energies and tough decision making in these warlike situation that we are in and with that said i will give it back to you ranga and we can take some more questions i hope okay. uh th thanks Raju. i think that was a very nice uh, summing up of uh, the situation and uh, uh you know saying that it is really going to be tough not mentioning the words but uh, giving a sense of hope as well. A uh, couple of questions around that. Uh, you, you are somebody who's seen some of this uh, crisis, the Y2K, the internet meltdown, and uh, and you came back and actually started a business right after that. Uh, 
uh, obviously this uh, crisis is a little different from that but the the lesson that we could take from y2k or any other crisis is that uh, or or even take a step back the world war 2 or any other crisis like that is that there is always hope after that uh, you know uh, can you throw some experiences of yours uh, what went through your mind uh, more let more personally when when you faced some some of this crisis in the past uh, and if that we could learn a few things from that that could be a starting point i can say that three of the startups that i have done have all been during the down cycle of economy and the first one was in 91 when there was soon after the war that happened between us and the country was actually us was doing bad but i had a technology leverage that there was an emerging technology at that time for, frankly customers started looking for competence and not just brand and we saw a few cracks for example we got consulting contracts against some very big names i don't want to mention systems integration contract and software development contract in those days against big names like ibm e assembling the team was also a lot easier when you are in tough challenging times actually believe me talent pool is available in plenty when and when there is a boom you can't find talent so your job at this point in time like what i did was to assemble a very powerful team yeah it cost us money but that team delivered and that was the beginning of vetri which grew to very large uh, scales later the second startup was revity that again was post the uh, World War, sorry, the World Trade Center dropping and all the challenges that happened in 2001, two time frame. There again, big customers actually start looking for innovative ideas because they need to cut costs and innovative ideas from proven people. And that was the mantra with which I built the second business. And of course, Medal was also soon after the 2008 crash, if you will. And there again, it was largely focused on consumer business in India. And this is the first time I'm working totally in India. There again, consolidation, bringing and building the team, making sure that you build the right processes to scale those are things that I think that helped us build what we have built. So I would say that it is important that you lead from the front, you assemble the right team, you find the right customers, have the courage to say no to some customers who are too demanding and build a business and build the trust of your customers. So with that, I think there is going to be similar opportunities now that will emerge. And I think we all can get a slice of that big opportunity. And I'm sure, Ranga, I know your story too. It is no different how you all built Servion. And that was also in the similar time frame of 2002, if I remember you and Bala building it. And winning was not easy, but winning big names was not tough either absolutely absolutely okay so um, we we will now uh, get into some some buckets of areas i think we'll start right at the top uh, this is a tough time for uh, ceos owners leaders of the business and many of the people who are who are logged in here or uh, tai members or uh, associate members of tai or uh, people associated with Thai, uh, they are small businesses uh, as well. Now, uh, it is a tough time because uh, one side you're going to have a business reception, cash flow issues, uh, employee issues, uh, and all that. In the, particularly in the smaller organizations, it's more difficult. 
so the the leaders are uh, in a very uh, tough situation i mean they one side they can't show the panic to people but uh, on the other side they need to be real and know that this is a panic situation now uh, it's a very tricky position for leaders so what would you tell those leaders i mean how how should they deal with this in terms of uh, the immediate uh, future i mean obviously i want to say that we'll recover over a period of time but what do they do today i mean what do they tell their employees what do they tell the customers how do they handle this i will say that follow the mantra that i follow which is courage energy clarity and these are three critical things that you have to follow you have to have the courage to lead from the front at this point in time you must become the source of energy and you must bring enormous clarity and help the people do their job by this let me say that you know this is the time to engage fully you need to be fully involved in your business if you are running it as the ceo and you need to be on ground and listening very hard to all your people the opportunities are going to be different in different parts of india or globally so you need to really be very sharp in coming to your own conclusions at any given point in time as to what opportunities are you going to grab and whether it is manufacturing whether it is new opportunities whether it is it bpo or healthcare or telecom or wherever you are i think it's important that you have the courage to look at it and you have your ears to the ground and you are listening hard and you are motivating your people and above all you need to be calm and i am sure there will be very very tough moments where you don't know if you are going to survive tomorrow when particularly the payroll date hits and the rents are due and gst taxes have to be paid all those uh, every single month for the next few months are going to be trying times so have the courage and build banks are going to be very important partners nbfcs are going to be partners if you have the luxury raise capital at this time i'm sure it is going to be available may not be at the valuation you want but i think it is time to conserve cash and bring in cash into the company at whatever cost and pursue the dreams that you have having said the positives there is no room for fear or laziness you have to get out of fear and you cannot show your fears to your people you cannot lose your temper because they themselves are worried they are looking up to you you have a business to run they have a home to run they have mortgages to pay they have household bills to take care of so i think be compassionate be compassionate and within your means your charity begins at home take care of your business and yourself but be a little bit about margins at this point in time as far as customers and your consumers are up there i my mantra would be service first and very high quality of service don't compromise on these two this is the time to build the trust and i am sure that misery as company you are not alone every one of your competitor is going through similar situation and your transparent communication with your vendor community will help you at this point in time and you need to be keeping up your commitment don't promise something that you cannot deliver don't have to be 100% transparent in trying to show all the bad news the mantra for leaders to lead from the front yeah it's going to be long hours it's going to be looking for every small opportunity and tough decision making whether you should go there or whether you should continue with the old businesses that are there my recommendation also would be that try and see if you have the bandwidth in your management team to separate banks investors 
and be open with them in terms of your challenges and uh, work twice as hard. Absolutely. And uh, uh, obviously, just going uh, a step into that a uh, little more, uh, you know, as you said, it, uh, life is going to be tough, it's going to be a challenge, it's going to be a uh, huge issue to be transparent with everybody and uh, build trust and manage the crisis at many fronts, it's like a war. Um, and many times, the, the entrepreneurs or the business owners find it extremely difficult to uh, kind of convey everything that they have or share everything they have with even with family members because they don't want uh, people to get panicked. But um, uh, yet, I think they're going through this. So would you recommend uh, them having friends, having mentors at this point in time, even if there are no solutions to be provided, at least have somebody to talk to, somebody to go and uh, share your issues with and uh, so on so forth. Uh, yeah, let me answer that. I think I got your question. I would say that, yeah, you know, at this point in time, my personal belief is no consultants help you. And you need to believe in your instincts and communicate. I really think that you don't have to tell the problems completely, but you can certainly outline the challenges that you are waking up to every single day. I think you need to be honest with your people and you will not believe people will follow you if they trust you. And at this point in time, I don't see people jumping ship that easily. I think it's not the time. I think they will come through. And you also have a tough job. I'm sure all of us carry dead wood and you need to get rid of that because some of them will be pretenders and very few will be real players. So your tough job will be to sort out who are the players in your organization and who are the pretenders in your organization. And you need to weed them out and make sure that you are not listening to the same people constantly and giving your mind share only to a few people and you are leaving the rest of the team wondering what is happening in the boardroom or in the corporate office. So please engage yourself, create a routine that would be powerful at this point in time, but the mentor should know you well, mentor should know your business well, mentor needs to understand your people well, your customer well, your products well, your services well. So yeah, listen to them. I am always saying listen to people, but don't expect anyone to give you a magic bullet, silver bullet and say, that's it. You use this prescription. It's for you to develop what is your plan of action going forward. And that's the only way I see you all and all of us, including ourselves, coming out of the tough challenges ahead of us.